Priya Mama. Sir, thank you, sir. I'm present in this virtual platform. I welcome, on behalf of Kalahandi University, I welcome our dignit esteemed dignitaries, our chief speaker, our honorable vice chancellor, our register sir, our controller of finance sir, and our PGC sir. Okay. I welcome everyone to this 59th episode of motivational talk series of Uthishtata. A warm welcome to everyone. And today, our chief speaker is Professor Digambar Patrasar from American University of Beirut, Lebanon. Sir, it's our great pleasure to have you with us and it's our proud privilege to listen to you. And without taking much of your time, now I take this opportunity to request Lipsa Maharana to sing the welcome song. Lipsa Maharana, please. Thank you so much. পরবতে মজুর ডাকিলা বুঝি নাই পারে মনুরে সঙ্গাত বুঝি তো নাই পারে মনু Thank you so much, Lipsa, for this beautiful song on Kalahandi. Really, it was a very lucid song on Kalahandi and its traditions. Uh, now, it's time to start our webinar, our uh, 59th motivational talk series. Now, I request our register, sir, Dr. Pitambar Bhoi, sir, to give the inaugural address. Sir, please. I request our register, sir, Sri Pitambara Bhoi, sir, to uh, give the inaugural address. Uh, Madam, we have joined, but due to some problem, I think uh, Mana is not able to connect. Um, okay, sir. Uh, well, the title of uh, the 59th motivational talk series is uh, very interesting. It's about the journey of uh, Professor Digambara Patrasar from Kalahandi to Beirut. And we are waiting to listen you, sir. Now I request uh, Kusbu Agrawal, madam, to introduce the chief speaker of today's episode. Uh, madam Kusbu Agrawal. Thank you so much, madam. 
Am I audible to all of you? Yes, dear. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. A very good afternoon to all of you. I am Kushbu Agarwal, now working as assistant professor in botany at Kalahandi University. So it's a, indeed a proud moment for me to introduce our today's speaker before you all. So today we have with us Professor Digambar Patra sir, who is presently working as professor in chemistry at American University of Beirut. Also, he is the chairperson at Department of Chemistry at American University of Beirut. Sir, a very warm virtual welcome to Kalahandi University. First of all, let me tell you that Professor Patra is the alumni of Anstweil Government College, Auto Government Autonomous College, Bhavani Patna, and he has completed his graduation in chemistry from here only. He has done his MSc in chemistry and MPhil in chemistry from Sambalpur University, being in the first class first position. He has completed his PhD in 2001 and thereafter pursued postdoctorate from IIT Madras. He has also postdoctorate experiences from Department of Chemistry, University of Basel, Switzerland, and National Institute of Natural Sciences, Okazaki, Japan. Since then, he is very active into research and he has a vast experience of teaching and research for the last 22 years. He has been served being visiting lecturer, Department of Physics, Waseda University, Tokyo, Japan, assistant and associate professor at Department of Chemistry, American University of Beirut. And now he is also serving as adjunct professor at National Institute of Technology, Meghalaya, India. To his credit, Professor Patra has 137 number of publication in referred journals of international and national repute, one patent and so many conference proceedings. It is very surprising that Dr. Patra is one among the few Indians to be among world's top 2% scientists as per the data of Stanford University release list 2020 with a Google Scholar citation of 4,433 and a H index of 35, which is very rare. And this is a very great achievement of Professor Patra. So for his pioneering work, he has been working as invited journal invited international journal referee with many of the reputed publishers like Nature Publishing Group, American Chemical Society, Royal Chemical Society, Elsevier, Springer, and many more. And to his credit, he has completed almost 28 research projects as principal investigator and co-investigator and also has supervised many graduate and PhD thesis. He has been decorated with many prestigious fellow, many fellowships, many and member to many professional bodies. Actually, it is very difficult to introduce him completely in this short time. So, sir, excuse me if I have left something. And, uh, but more than these, I'll say uh, these achievements, he's an extremely decent and nice human being who has helped large number of people from all walks of life and always raises his concern for the people of Orissa and especially Kalahandi. So we are actually lucky to uh, hear from him earlier uh, in a seminar organized by Department of Botany and Zoology on the topic of nanotechnology. So we are indeed lucky today to have him with us. So uh, this time we will hear something different and about his journey, which will definitely inspire all of us. So thank you. Thank you, Kusfu, madam, for this nice and uh, elaborate uh, introduction about uh, today's speaker, Professor Patra. 
Uh, with this, I once again welcome the son of the soil, the proud son of Kalahandi, to this virtual platform. Sir, the virtual platform is yours, and we are eagerly waiting to listen to you. Please, sir. Namaskar. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, Dr. Nath and Mr. Mrs. Agrawal, for your kind and comprehensive uh, introduction. I don't know I deserve that or not. Uh, my esteemed uh, and honorable vice chancellor, Professor Satpathi, who is my teacher also. So my pronoun to him, uh, uh, esteemed uh, register, uh, Sri Bhoi, esteemed uh, Dr. Sahu, and the rest of the audience, students, and my dear uh, friends and whoever is watching this online or later on offline, my greetings uh, to you uh, from the land of Kolahandi. Presently, I'm in Bhavani Patna. So first of all, uh, when uh, Professor Satpati contacted me and I suggested to give a talk different than on education, then he said something like this, like Kolahandi to Beirut, I was very excited. This is something a different topic. And although uh, it is really very important for students, uh, in our university, we have similar motivational talk where we invite different uh, people, especially alumni and other people who have vast experience in life from music to professional bodies right. like professors, doctors, and engineers. So I really thank Professor Satpathi for taking a very uh, uh, nice initiative in a very short interval of time as soon as he joined the university as if he knew everything every inch of the university and he took this in initiative and this is the 59th uh, uh, you know show so i really appreciate it and for such talk i'm really proud of my institutions uh, which is really grateful um, for all the contribution and initiative Professor Satpati is taking as the first regular vice chancellor. So uh, today, uh, as uh, I was told to talk about Kalahandi to Beirut, so especially this talk is not academic, it's more about my journey from Kalahandi to Beirut. So I will focus mostly uh, my experience and how I grew over the time, uh, specifically uh, focusing on students. So pardon me, most of like Professor Satpati and others who are more experienced uh, than me, maybe I may not give you much information or new, new things, but especially it is dealing with mostly students. So when we talk about people like Jeff Bezos, or you can say any great personality, or you may say like Einstein or Sudha Murthy, or any I Draupadi Murmu, whomever we can talk about, these are the great people, great, great nationalists. I'm not going to talk about them. So today, what I'm going to talk about is, I'm going to talk about story of an average man, a humble man. And an average man can be from any part of the society. It can be next door, next to your house, or within your house. So why? it is so important to discuss and talk about a middle class dream after all all of us are middle class we have a dream we may not our life may not be that significant compared to a great people like a great nobel laureate or a very famous scientist who has made a uh, landmark in history or a great artist or musician or writers or you can say superstar or not so famous uh, leaders, because leaders are well known. So what is important for a common man or success of a common man is to lead a happy life and comfortable life. This is what we aspire from the childhood. Middle class, we have struggles, economic struggles, we have social struggles. So we just want to improve our economic conditions to improve it. And this is our dream starts from there, from the childhood from our parents or from our grandparents, we learn that one. So we search for a purpose in life, but this life is mostly 
for a developing country like India, it struggle for improving economic condition. We rarely talk about give, giving a meaning to life, but with experience, we find this. And this is what will be my journey. So how I struggle from improving in economic conditions, then I realize the importance of life. And this is what I will be summarizing through my journey. So first, to begin with, the story begins for a middle class is when you are a child, you will like to grow up and help your parents, help your family, make a social safety, or you have a comfortable life. And this one gives through health and education. This is what mostly the middle class Indians now aspire for. Although there are other things, but I'm just simplifying it in, in terms of my life, my experience. But when I look back today from where I am today uh, to those years where I started my career or whatever, when I was in school or high school, I really feel jealous of all these students at younger generations because my life was more or less like many of these young generation but this young generation have better facility more access to information than we had they have very sophisticated internet they have in fact better teachers who are skilled and they have better uh, technology to adopt so when I am talking about my life, it's a simple life story, an average academic who has also failed many times, but who did not give up what is in my life. I still continue. I realize majority of you or the students at any point might have failed, but not realized. So that is one important thing I realize is very important to Recognize your mistakes, whether you want to succeed in the national level or international level. So to look back, when I see in many times, I was also lost. I also failed. I had obstacles. I got confused. I got depressed. I got angry. I got afraid. I was worried. I felt jealous too when somebody got succeed. I felt lazy too. I felt disappointed too. I, I was struggling. So all these are part of life. But one thing that keep, uh, keep me motivating is I did not give up. I cons consistently put my effort. So this is to begin my life. I was born in a small village next to Dharmagat town. It's hardly one and a half kilometers from the Panchayat College Dharmagar, so towards the Kharipadar. Kharipadar, many of you may know the work of uh, uh, the woodwork from Kharipadar. This is my Panchayat. So my village has a population of 1,000. There was difficult times in my childhood. I, I remember maybe I was not going to school that time. Maybe I was three, four years or in the little bit in the grade one or grade two. Sometimes we used to have really no water in the summer and the, our villagers used to dig well inside the pond to have some water. There was serious scarcity of water. As you know, Kalandi was famous in those years in 80s, early 80s for droughts. So initial period, although my family uh, economic condition, I will not put is a, it was poor but there were many poor people in the village too, but it was not comfortable too for us, even though people may compare, inside Kalahandi we may compare, but when we say in larger scale, life was not comfortable, but my schooling was good. I was good from the childhood in math, learning and memorizing things. So somehow I succeeded, but I was very weak in sports. I was not motivated, although I, my interest was in the, in the sports, I could not do much. Then I moved to the middle school. Middle school is in Dharmagar, so KDME school, if some of you know this one. My initial period was not so good in the KDME school. I was very shy, I was very nervous, I was panicking. When I was going to school, my father used to push me. 
I was really struggling because I was I had no friends there. Only me and all all the friends there were new uh, to me. But even though I was homesick, slowly I started making friends. Then I started enjoying. So from grade seven, I lived with one of my teacher who is also relative in Dharmagar. Then I continue my study in the middle school. My middle school academically, I was average. I was not, even though I was a good students in my childhood, but I did not do in the top level in the sense I was not topping in the class. But my high school was very memorable. I had very good friends. And many of uh, us are, I think, relatively well established today. So in the high school, I live in dorms, uh, which we call hostels, typically in Indian way, we call hostels. But I was very obedient with my teachers. I always follow them. And I was among uh, always, there was, you know, the rank was going on, but between three to five or two to five in the class. Uh, from the 8th to 10th. Uh, although I had a competitive mind, I never compare. Other used to compare, but I, I never used to compare or never felt jealous of my friends. I don't know why. I never uh, compare myself with other students who were doing better than me. Uh, I was good in math, but I had a strong mind from my childhood, especially on academics. So I did well in my matriculation, then moved to the government college Bhavani Patna for my plus two. But one thing that did not help me in Bhavani Patna, in the beginning, I was very overconfident. Maybe it was my success in high school, but I did not concentrate in the beginning and transferring from Odia medium to English medium also did not help me. So I kept postponing study, even if I was studying some time, I was not understanding the basic concept of science when the language uh, language is playing a role. I did not do bad, but I did not do as I was expecting in my plus two. So, and I realize when I see now, maybe I was less truthful to myself. So one important thing in my life I learned is Whatever your life, you should be truthful to yourself. You can cheat others, but you cannot cheat yourself. And second mistake I was doing is I was trying to please everybody and which doesn't work. So you have to sometimes be strong. You should overcome the mental blocks, confusion, stay, stay in comfort, uh, staying in comfort zone is one of the drawbacks that time I realized. Then when I moved to the BSc, I was initially, my parents were pushing me for writing for medical entrance exam. I wrote, but I don't think I was putting really any effort for the entrance exam. I wrote a couple of times. Then I concentrated uh, in the first year of BSc. I did not concentrate much. I thought in one year I will do it. Again, second year of BSc, although I did in some of the courses very well, some courses I did not get as I was expecting. Final year, I did very well. Uh, then I got a seat in the Sambalpur University. I was not sure. Uh, it was the entrance exams. We had about 600 students that time. Out of them, only 20 students from general category were selected. And my rank was 15. I had a couple of mistakes during the entrance exam. The entrance exam was had 10 questions, each containing six marks. So I was so excited in the beginning. I still remember I just saw the six and I thought I have to answer six questions. And I said, I will answer eight questions. And I left two questions. And then I was very upset when I came back from the entrance exam and I saw I have done only six. But others said, you know, if you have done well, six questions is enough to pass and uh, to get a high, high score and my interview was good and i was selected uh, then one thing i started doing a little bit extracurricular activity although in high school i was participating in drama in small scale in the bsc level i started a little bit writing on poetry short stories and drama but not in the level of uh, you can say in a higher level but like a hobby so when I moved to university, 
because in BSc, I really felt depressed. Even though I succeeded, I got the Sambalpur University. My, my grades was not satisfying to myself. I was really very, very angry on my uh, angry and disappointed. So as soon as I joined Sambalpur University, I spent more time in library and started concentrating on understanding the concept. And the, when the midterm exam came, it was a semester system. I remember in some of the course, I got 100 out of 100 and I topped in the class. Then everybody talked about me. Nobody was recognizing me in the beginning. Then when I topped in the first midterm, then uh, my friends and they started recognizing me. They started talking about me. Uh, then it gives me a boost. I continue. I took this as an opportunity and I understand from my professors how to exploit knowledge and bring clarity in thoughts. And then I, which built up my confidence, then I continue my study. I, I did well in my university life, but I also enjoyed a lot during my university. I, in, I was involved in uh, poetry, drama. In fact, uh, in my university, we got the best uh, production and best director I got in for one of my drama, uh, like Andharo Muharati. Uh, so, and another one we did is Tathapi Panchichi. I did two drama during my university life. And then I also uh, wrote the, I was thinking everybody, nobody, nobody was there to guide me. And in my time, it was very important to find a job like banking or civil service. I was not so inclined, even though my grandfather was encouraging me to write civil service exam, I was not so interested. So I thought of preparing banking. And then the GATT exam came. I said, why not try? And I wrote the GATT exam and I got a high percentile. Then my life changed. So what I'm saying is sometime you don't plan and life is stored something in life there are something which is stored for you so i continue my mp of course i then i joined iit and in between i came and uh, finished my mp just for thesis so university life was really very very enjoyable for me and then when i moved to iit i had some research experience at um, uh, Sambalpur University, so that helped me. But before I joined the IIT in Madras, actually I was got uh, two positions in IIT Delhi and IIT Kanpur too. But I was not interested to pursue in that line in inorganic chemistry and uh, another field. I was not so keen. So then I joined IIT Madras and I worked in a field of photochemistry. Uh, I was confused. Some of my professors were saying it takes longer time. So I moved to MTech uh, stream. Then I realized when I was doing an interview, somebody told me, if you do MTech, what you will do? You may not get a job. Then I changed my mind and I went for PhD. So when I continued in IIT Madras, of course, I was doing extremely well, but I faced many difficulties also. For example, first time I realized the image of Odia people outside Odisha. So otherwise in, in, in Odisha, we never recognize some people would ask me, especially from South India, they will ask me, why you come to IIT Madras? You are from Odisha. And in the, my interview also, they asked me. Sometimes they ask me like strange questions, like when there was Kar Kargil war, one person came and asked me, where are you from? I said from uh, Odisha. And he said, no, you don't like Odisha. You look like from Delhi. So something like very strange things, but it kept building up how Odia people are looked down outside in those years. Today we have in better positions. Then I moved to Switzerland and in Switzerland I did my, after my PhD, I did my postdoc, first postdoc in University of Basel, Switzerland. And there too, I started missing Odisha. In Madras, I was not missing that much, but once I went abroad, I started realizing and reading the experience of great people like Mahatma Gandhi and other people, all the leaders, political leaders. And then I could imagine why they become a freedom fighter. 
because once you start doing independently things, you will really re realize the importance of India, what we miss it, what we don't have, and what we have. So both good things and bad things. Then I started slowly getting motivated to, you know, about concentrating on Odisha and development work of Odisha. And we realized there is no national institute in Odisha. So me and another professor from Arizona State University, we started collaborating with, and then we started writing articles, uh, uh, you know, uh, analyzing things. And we demanded a National Institute of Science uh, because ICER was moved to Kolkata in those years. Uh, it took two years for us. Then we got political support. And finally, NICER was declared in Bhubaneswar. Then we worked for IIT and KB, a central university in KBK. And all this through our some academic comparison, those years, the government of India the, brought the regional balance. We, our article was posted on the regional imbalance in India. So this is how I began. And then I got motivated from science to non-science background. Maybe my science background, it is not right place to talk about more because maybe some other time I will talk about my research, my experience in chemistry. So then I got motivated and I continue. I got a Humboldt Fellowship from Switzerland. Uh, to, I went to Germany. Humboldt Fellowship is one of the most competitive fellowship uh, internationally. And I was selected. Uh, that motivated me. I work on a project like single molecules, uh, fluorescence. Then I got another postdoctor fellowship in uh, JSPS postdoctoral fellowship in Japan, which is also competitive. And I spent there two years. Then I did uh, one more year uh, as a visiting professor in visit, visit, visiting lecturer in Waseda University. Then I moved to present positions in American University of Beirut. So during this time, I was lucky to meet some of the great people, great Nobel laureate. For example, when I was in uh, Tokyo, my host professor, he was expected to get Nobel Prize. Unfortunately, he passed away, but he proved the Bohr's model of ATP synthesis in chemistry, that is in biology, biochemistry, ATP synthesis, uh, synthesis and enzyme. So uh, my, I work on that project also in, during my, uh, ex, my research in Japan. I met Boyer. Uh, then I got some good uh, motivational things from him that how failure is so important, not only in the personal development, but also science. Then in 2006, another Nobel laureate, McKinnon, I, I spent with him one day. So I got some good opportunity to personally interact and spend some time, have dining together, visit some place together uh, with three, four Nobel laureate which makes me really happy. Uh, at the same time, I also realize how life changes if you don't pursue your interest. I, have, I, see, I have seen people who are forced to do a banking job and later on they were so frustrated, they left the banking and pursue something else, uh, for example, writing. So I, I would like to say, uh, especially for students, job is important but your interest is more important than the job so job should be something that excites you that interests you if you do a a job that doesn't interest you you just work mechanically which is not good for you and which is not good for your country or the society so that is one thing i learned over the years uh, when I met a professor in Harvard University when I was visiting, he said, Harvard University is well known all over the world, but he has written for few students, few of his students, hundreds of recommendations to find a job. So it was not easy to find an academic job in abroad in my times. And I did not have any contact in American University of Beirut. So, I just applied. I applied in India. I applied in two places. I got interview in Australia, UK, in India also. I was called, called in IIT Madras, eh, sorry, IIT Mumbai and IIT Kanpur. And uh, then 
I got the interview in AUB, this university, and I got the job offer. Uh, in IIT Mumbai, although I don't dis I am not complaining, but this is the fact, they had kept somebody for six months as a temporary basis, and they just called me for interview. I knew I am not going to get this because in the same field, they are going to, uh, somebody told me he is a son of a professor. I don't mind, I'm not complaining about him, but in life sometimes it, uh, it is not fair. You may come across unfairness, but you don't have to take it emotionally, just leave it there. I never complain about this because I'm sharing these things uh, just to make sure that you don't expect always you will get fair chance in life. Sometimes things may go against your interest, which may not be logical. And I got this position and I went there when I joined, my colleague said, you know, there were hundreds of applicants, 33 were shortlisted and out of 33 among top three, and you were the only candidate among Top, you were the number one, and everyone unanimously put you number one, and that is that happened first time in the history of our department. I was surprised, and you you will imagine I am an Indian. Rest of my colleagues in my departments are Lebanese. There is one Jordanian, but these Lebanese has foreign passport, or they are educated in United States, like in top university like Rutgers or in Canada McGill or France they have top university with a great scientist so it's not easy to find a place where nobody is there to help you out just you apply and based on your cv based on your credential credential you find a job sometimes also people think working in abroad is bad no i don't think i realize after working in middle east uh, i want to tell this one sometime in kalahandi people misunderstand it you see the remittance the people like us, non-resident Indian, like in the special in Middle East, sends about $83 billion. And you know the export and import, Indian government buy things from abroad and Indian government sell things from the abroad. How much India governments buy, especially oil and oil, is much more higher than the how much we sell, we export. So if we don't have this remittance, then our currency would have been gone down, down, and we would have like a Sri Lankan uh, condition today. And this is happening especially last 30 years. So contribution of non-residents, Indians, remittance is really a big help for Indian economy. So when you are not academically sound, you will not understand. So if you are working in abroad, sending money dollar, you as an Indian citizen, is nothing wrong in it you should feel proud of it. And I'm not saying from me, somebody taught me these things when I was in IIT. And this is why people from Kerala, Punjab, they are smarter than us, because in Odisha, we think if somebody is in abroad, we are not patriot. No, people in abroad are more patriot than within. So I'm not saying everybody should go abroad, but if somebody is going for his own interest, nothing wrong in it. If you are helping your country, if you are helping your society, if you are contributing to the overall humanity, overall science, because science has no regional boundary, no geography boundary. Education has no geography boundary. If I am producing a doctor or engineer or students in Beirut or in Bhavani Patna, and this guy is contributing to the society, it doesn't matter. At the end, the Indian guy goes and work for a problem in the United States. They solve a problem. So uh, there is nothing we should be worried about when we are in a modern uh, world and we should uh, take when life comes as it is. At the end, I would like to share one of the small experience from my life and from my village. You might have uh, heard his name, Syam Sundar Jal. We come from the same village and Syam Sundar Jal has a small orphanage in my village, you may say. When, you, when we were in middle school, when I was in the middle school, he used to drop me sometime in his cycles. He had a small tailoring, tailoring shop. He also, he had a small person of, you know, collecting orphans. If somebody left in the street, he started doing that. And over the years, it becomes a hobby and passion for him. 
And today, many of you know in Kalahandi is quite popular. He has got many awards and doing a great work in Dharmagar area. So in life, it is not science at all. It's not humanity at all. It, it is not social science at all. It is all of them together. So at the end, what I will repeat is Depokhi Urejete Duro Sejane Tahara Behara. So this is what in life teaches us. So as much as we keep our mind open and broad, I think we can succeed, but we should keep our Ucha Vilas as it is. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for untolding the untold story of your journey from uh, Bhavani Patna to Beirut. And uh, really, it's so inspirational. It's so motivational. I think uh, all the audience, particularly the students, might have been motivated a lot by listening to your story, your journey from, I would like to say, uh, Bhavani Patna to Beirut and Sambalpur to Lebanon and Madras to America. And uh, I was so fascinated by two, three um, sentences of your uh, speech. Uh, really, sir, uh, I like the one you told. You can cheat others, but you can't cheat yourself. It's true, sir, because when we cheat ourselves, one day only we will be the sufferer. No, nobody else will be the sufferer. And I also very much like your uh, another sentence, sir, which you uh, told that uh, job is important, but your interest is much more important than your job because that will help you to be a very successful person and to lead a very happy life if you are satisfied with your job. And the most important line which you told, and I, I was so much impressed by it, is that uh, you may come across unfair things. And it's true, sir, we should not be very emotional when we came across such things. And who knows? God has kept better things for us like it happened with you. So it's uh, it was your uh, story and your uh, today's uh, speech was really very interesting and very motivational. Thank you so much, sir, for being with us, for telling your journey. And uh, really, it will inspire many of our students. Uh, thank you once again. And uh, now it's time for a presidential address. Uh, the reason behind this program, this uh, motivational talk series, is none other than our own esteemed vice chancellor. This Uttishthata is the brainchild of our vice chancellor, sir, who is so keenly motivating the journey of Uttishthata and for whose untiring effort it Uttishthata has stepped into today, into 59th episode. Thank you so much, sir, for starting such a noble venture uh, like Uttishthata because it is because of this program that we have been able to listen to such uh, uh, great personalities. We have been able to listen to such motivational stories of the proud sons of Odisha, of the proud sons of Kalahandi. Uh, so uh, now may I now request our Vice Chancellor, Professor Sanjay Kumar Sarpathi, sir, to deliver his presidential address. Uh, sir, please. ठीक कोलन मो बहुत कच्चों को फिरी गली बहुत कथा मन पड़ ला और कोलाहंडी रो बेरूट उटे लंबा रास्ता जेती की कथा कुहा है ला चेटा किंचित है मात्रो जेम्ती मो अनेक समय रे कहे उटे समुद्र भीतरे भासन ता पत्थरों रो पहाड़ तारा एको का समांग सो ऊपर को दिसे नौ दस समांग सो तोड़े इन्हों जेती कथा कुहा है ला चेटा वे तो सही कथा समांग सर ताकि सब तौले रहेगा इतनी से कथा भीतर कुसुमिला बोल को मो मनो भीतरे किसी जिन सासुची जुड़ाऊची अंदर सा औरा सा ठीरू पुनी सा सौरचालिस ये लातिनी सा अनासी वर्षा ते समय उड़ी सारा गुटिये दिलगो अंधकार मौजूगो इतनी उड़िया मने थिले 
किंतु परस्पर को चिन्ह नई अंधकारमय जुगर शेष पर्यायर ही मधुसूदन गोपबंधु भली तुंग उड़िया नेता मैंने आसिले आर्वभारतीय स्तर में विश्व स्तर में ख्याति संपन्न है मात्र ता पूर्व कहीं बोधे ख्याति लाभ कर तेणु जना जाए ये दीर्घ समय मध्य ओडिया मैंने जीवन मृत हो रही अवस्थित थी मात्र शक्ति ना गौरव गौरवाज्जल अतीत थी मात्र यह संपूर्ण विस्मृत होता फल कौन सी फलप्रद प्रेरणा मिल नाला वाणिज्य कृषि और राजसेवा बल कौन सी जाति उन्नत आर्थिक अवस्था लाभ कै मात्र ये अंधकारमय जुगर ये समस्त अणओड़िया मान हाथ को चली जाता ओडार समस्त व्यवसाय प्राय समस्त जमीदार और समस्त राजकर्मचारी अणओड़िया जदि आम निरीक्षक देखा तो दीर्घ समय मध्य ओडिया मानक शोचन अवस्था कौन पाई अधपतन बहु कारण भर गोटे कारण हूँ अतीत प्रति अति भक्ति किंतु कर्पूर उड़ी जा कनाटा पड़ रही नहीं अतीत को दोहर मान कौन ऐतिहासिक मान इतिहास गोटे जतिय सम्मिलन से मैंने मैंने कथाटे उठला तुम कौन अच्छी मुझा परिचालना करी एवं उत्तर देली कि नहीं मैंने मुझे कलिंग कलिंग युद्ध पृथ्वी दस टी युद्ध भितर गोटे आंसर्स किंतु आम जानू जो अशोक सागर लड़ी ओडिया टिके एपर्तंत आम से कथा जानू बा आम ऐतिहासिक मान से खोजी पारि ना ये गोटे उदाहरण मात्र तेज ओडे नूतन परिस्थित सांस्कृतिक अभ्युदय धीरे धीरे घटी वर्तमान समय बदली जा बोधे पृथ्वीर सबु अंचल ओडिया मैंने अच्छा बहुत विशेष विशेष स्थान रे अच्छा तेणुक जो कथा जी कहा है अनुभूति अनुभव कौन सी परिपूरक ना से कथा सब अनेक मनरे गोटे प्रेरणार दीपाड़ी जाल बोली आशा करा जाए आमर जो कार्यक्रम उत्तिष्ठत उठ कि शब्द आज निश्चय अनेक को उठेबार निदुआ मनीष को निद भंगेबार साज्य कर सामर्थ्य बहन करे मु तेणु भावुची जे से कथा सब अनेक को उठाऊ आग को धन्यवाद दिगंबर बढ़िया लगे कथा और विशेष भाव में जहाँ कहली आशार अरण्य ना मन पकईदे खुशी कर दे मत आज्ञा सर सर जस्ट टू एड यू समथिंग दैट इंस्पायर मी फॉर माय फर्स्ट ड्रामा इन संबलपुर यूनिवर्सिटी तथापि वंचित थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर योर एवर मोटिवेशनल रिमार्क्स एंड वर्ड्स ऑफ इंस्पिरेशन थैंक यू वंस अगेन ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ एवरीवन फॉर स्टार्टिंग एंड कंटिन्यूइंग दिस प्रोग्राम ऑन इंटररप्टेडली नाउ वी हैव कम टू द एंड ऑफ टुडेस एपिसोड Now I request Srimati Sarita Bag Madam to deliver vote of thanks. Thank you, Madam. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Good afternoon to all. Samastam ko mora pranam. It's really a great privilege and a great opportunity to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of Kalahandi University in this auspicious gathering of 59th motivational lecture series of Putishtata on the topic Kalahandi to Beirut. Sir, it's the topic itself is a great motivation for all of us. 
from me kalahanji which is not only known for any good, bad reason rather than all world know what is the condition of kalahanji so itself the title from kalahanji to verut itself it's a great motivation the topic and obviously the journey of a great person so at the outset my sincere thanks and deep sense of gratitude goes to today's speaker esteemed guest of the occasion professor digambar patra sir American University of Beirut, Lebanon, who is a renowned academician, eminent scientist, and a great social activist, I'll say, for such highly thought-provoking and enlightening session. Sir, it's a great pleasure to know that you are alumni of this S12 Government College, Autonomous Bhavani Patna College, and you belong to Kalahandi district, and that too, Dharmagad area, which is my area. So definitely, sir, it's a great inspiration for me and all the students of Kalahandi University. Sir, it is not easy, as Khusbu Madam was telling, that it is not easy that you got listed among the world's top 2% scientists by Stanford University in 2020. And also, you are the recipient of Alexander von Humboldt Research Fellowship, and you got JSPS postdoctoral fellowship in Japan. It's not an easy task, sir, and it's not an easy job. So, great salute to you, sir, and your determination to reach that position. Sir, your significant contribution in the field of science, your selfless service for the growth and development of the nation, our state, Odisha, as well as Kalahandi, your unique approach to sensitize people and various developmental issues, and consequently influencing government policies also, like establishment of Kurapur Central University and obviously Kalahandi University. So that is highly inspirational, sir. Thank you so much. It's really a great honor and obviously great privilege to listen to you, sir, and your journey. Definitely Kalahandi University, the students and the faculty members will remain indebted to you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for sharing your wisdom, your distinct approach and insights. You are a great inspiration for all of us, sir. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation and gracing the occasion with your gracious presence. One of your lines, sir, which impressed me a lot, that you did not give up. Whatever the condition, whatever the condition of, uh, whatever the adverse condition you have faced, but you did not give up. And that is the beauty of life. That should be the beauty of life. Whatever, the, because, and one sentence you mentioned, that a humble man who tried to get the success, which is next to your door, which is within you also. So just we have to find out. So thank you, sir. Thank you for your uh, story, for your journey, for your struggle that you shared with us today. Thank you so much. My immense gratitude from core of my heart goes to our Honorable Vice Chancellor of Kalahandi University, Professor Sanjay Kumar Satpati Sar, who has been the driving force behind uh, this and without whose effort and inspiration today would, would not have been able to accomplish this vision of meeting so many personalities from diverse fields. Series of motivational talk already we have been organized, uh, organized, and in coming days also definitely our university is going to organize such kind of programs. So it's only possible because of Professor Satpati sir. Sir, thank you. You have always aspired or inspired us for such academic engagement. So this is you, sir, who awakened the curious child within us, our hidden potential and capabilities. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I express my immense gratitude to our esteemed register, sir, Sri Pitambar Subhoi, sir, who is not present today for his support for such kind of program. I extend my deep sense of gratitude to Ms. Khusru, Khusbu Agrawal, madam, assistant professor in Botany, for her welcome address and wonderful guest introduction. Thank you, ma'am. My deep sense of gratitude goes to convener of this program, Captain Jadip Sahu, sir, for his exceptional leadership and immense potential to make this program successful. Thank you, sir. I would like to thank Dr. Nivedita Nath, ma'am, Associate Professor in Anthropology, Kalahandi University, for her wonderful moderation of the session and her constructive articulation. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Lipsha Maharana, for your beautiful song. Thank you. My deep sense of gratitude and a hearty vote of thanks goes to all distinguished faculties from Kalahandi University, my colleagues, eminent personalities, academician, esteemed faculties, all participants for their sincere participation and their uh, feedback, obviously. We are obliged for making this virtual made of gathering 
to make it thought provoking and successful thank you all of you at the last but not least my special thanks goes to mr vishnu choudhury our technical assistant of kalahandi university for his sincere cooperation and patience thank you thank you all thank you sarita madam for this uh, beautiful and uh, well articulated word of thanks thanks a lot and uh, now uh, it's time for santi patha uh, may i now request lip sir for santi patha सो निरामया भद्राणि पश्यन्तु भवे ओ Thank you, Lisa. Now we have come to the end of uh, the 59th episode of the motivational talk series with Mr. Tha, and uh, I thank each and every one of you from the core of my heart. Uh, may I now request our honourable Vice Chancellor, Professor Sanjay Satpathy Sir, to give permission to end up the episode. We will end up here and wait for the next 60th episode. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All.